Hi everybody, it's Parker from TestPrepChampions.com and I'm coming back at you with another GED math problem of the day. This one has to do with triangles and the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to get right into it. I'm working out of my Champions Guide 50 free GED math problems. You can get that down below if you want to. That's where the problem's coming from. And this is going to be a good check to see if you understand the Pythagorean theorem. So go ahead, as always, pause the video. Try to work on it on your own. Okay, so hopefully you got a chance to try this. So I do have a whole video on the Pythagorean Theorem, so I'm not going to rehash the whole thing here. But the basics are whenever we have a triangle, okay, the, this relationship always is going to hold. So this, let's say this is side A of the triangle. This is side B of the triangle. Let me close off our triangle here. Okay, and we've got side C of the triangle. And line A and line B are going to intersect here and form a 90 degree angle. So these lines are perpendicular. The perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form a 90 degree angle. And across from the 90 degree angle, the little box type thing in the triangle is side C, which is our hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the biggest side of a right triangle. So we can write the following formula, which is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And this is really, really important to know. And if it sounds like I'm speaking Greek, that's because I actually am. Because, because the Pythagorean theorem comes from Pythagoras, who was a, a Greek mathematician and philosopher. So again, you'll want to check out my other video. I'll go more in depth on how to do that. But this is the basic formula that we're going to use. And so in the question, we're asked to find the length of side C of the triangle. And so that's the missing side. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug these right into the formula. So 5 is going to be our A and 10 is going to be our B, and C is just going to be C. That's our unknown side. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for A squared, we're going to do 5 squared, and I'll put a parenthesis around here, plus 10 squared. Okay, and that's equal to C squared. So 5 squared is the same as doing 5 times 5, and hopefully you know that that's 25. If not, that's okay. You can always use your calculator. And 10 squared is 100. So we've got 25 plus 100, and that's equal to 125. So I'm just going to write, rewrite this over here. So we've got 125 equals C squared. Okay, we're done. So that's the answer. Actually, no, that's not the answer at all. Hopefully you weren't fooled, but if you were, that's okay. Don't be discouraged. I'll explain why this is actually not the answer yet. So we've just found C squared, okay? And what we want to do is we want to find C. So what we really have to do is we've got to find the square root of both sides. So we've got 125 is equal to C squared. So in order to get just C, we've got to take the square root of both sides here. So we take the square root of C squared, and we're going to take the square root of 125. And we can rewrite this whole thing, so I'm going to draw another arrow here showing me rewriting it. So the square root of 125 is equal to C. Okay, so if you take the square root of any number, that's just going to give you that number. So if you don't believe me, let me show you this. So let's say that we've got 2 squared, right? And 2 squared, hopefully you know that that's 4. Now if we take the square root of that, What's the square root of 4? 2. So it gets us just right back to that starting number. So that's what we did here. C squared, take the square root of that, it gets us, it just spits back out the C. Okay, so that's the answer. So the actual answer is A. Okay, if that trick fooled you off a little bit, threw you off a little bit, that's okay. Stick with it. But this is the basics of a Pythagorean theorem problem. So hopefully this made sense. And again, I'm going to give you that link down below. You can get this problem and 50 other, 49 other problems, I should say. You'll get the solutions that will really help you out with the GED math section. And please subscribe if you like this video. I do make these videos often, and I want to help you pass the GED test. So I don't want you to miss any content. Give me a thumbs up, too, if you like this video. That way I'll know if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, and good luck on your test.